We're on. Okay. This is how it works. This is how it always works. Every episode is totally led by God. God's total direction right here, right now. Right here, right now. I'm so excited to be here today on another episode of Angels Talk with the one and only Reverend Eliza Bloom. And where are we? We're at Unity Village in Kansas City area, Missouri. And what's going on here? And this is the um, Continuing Education Week C, which is everybody here is becoming a licensed Unity teacher. We are in the class called Transformation. And what's going on in the class? In the class, transformation. <laughs> That's right, right here, right now, on another episode of Angels Talk. Oh, come over here, this. say that again. Okay, thank you so much to the 21 people in this class who have participated in the entire week with us and in the filming this day and in the production of our book. The book. The book. What's the title? We don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You'll have to add that in. I'll have to come to Fort Wayne. It is done. Okay. You Amen. want to come to Fort Wayne? Please? I would love to come to Fort Wayne, yeah. I'll come hang out with you oh and my, my friend goodness. Gregory. You bet. Um, Eliza, you, you yes, are Sandra. the most magnificent. I get, I, this is emotional here because we've had a, a high-flying week this week. We have had a high-flying week. Would you share with everyone how this book happened? I would love to. May I have would the you microphone? Please? Go right ahead. <laughs> First day of the, the class transformation. We all joined here, 21 people coming together, very excited about the work that we're going to do this week. And we discovered that there was no book available in the bookstore. Spontaneously, this class, all 21 people in it, decided that our transformation would be to write a book. In that moment, 21 chapters were created titles were produced and each person is writing an own, their own chapter as a part of the assignment for the class. It's fantastic, it's exciting, and it is so transforming. And it's led totally by God. Amen, sister. <laughs> that is exciting, isn't it? It is. And I am enthusiastic about what God is doing on the planet today. Being, and by being the change through everyone that we want to see while we're in the process. Isn't that cool? Transformation. Transformation and our center station. Wow. And then our wings. And so it is. Yeah, well, let's get back and transform? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is take a little pill. Isn't that what we all want? Just a little pill? <laughs> if we have a little pill, we can just be over like that. We can become something new. We don't have to pray. We don't have to. We're meditating. We don't meet with friends to discuss issues about unity principles. We just take this little bit. Now I ask you, put that little bit in your glass. Just put it in your glass. Do not drink from it. Just put the little pill. You know, sometimes you have to dissolve the pill in the water. It does not hurt. It won't last very long. But if you leave it in there, stir it around with your finger a little bit, just the water, just the water. Something may happen. If it does not happen in the time I have allotted, it will happen throughout the class. And you're going to find little things happening with that. You can't force it. Like anything else, transformation takes time. Your own special time. And therefore, what I want you to pay attention to throughout class is what happens to your little pill that you're going to let transform you into something altogether different and you can take it home because from this pill something will transform for each of us in the water of life we present for my symbol i'm going to ask you to um close your eyes i promise i'm not going to hurt anybody <laughs> i'll stay here just a bit i want you to think back to yesterday afternoon when we walked into the labyrinth and what that felt like for you. And I'm going to share with you why the labyrinth is my symbol and always has been of my spiritual path. As I walk into the labyrinth, empty, but open and willing, I pick up tidbits as I start of spiritual truth. It's like being at a banquet where I start picking up little 
pieces of things. And the more, the closer I move to the inner in the labyrinth, the closer I move to my, the deepest inner part of myself. So that by the time I reach the middle and I pause, I give myself time to digest all that I've learned from my teachers, from my prayers, from my meditation, from my fellow students, from living. As I turn to leave the labyrinth, on my way out, I am learning how to apply, what to do now that I am nourished. Where do I go? What do I do? How do I use this energy that I've been given from my nourishment? So that by the time now I reach the exit and I turn silently to face the labyrinth again, I can raise my arms above my head in gratitude to God with the knowledge of the path that he wants to take me. And that's my symbol, the labyrinth. So open your eyes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well with spirit and nature, and I really needed to recharge myself from just work and everything. So I have been, you know, a bit anxious, and I've told a few people this before I got here, and I wasn't real clear about, you know, my path and my studies, and, you know, so I decided to go out to the pool and to relax from classes. So I spent a refreshing lunch hour at the pool so I could become more clear about my vision for myself and, and feeling more transformed. So that helps me to be in nature. So what I did is I took a rock from the stone wall along the pool where I felt really relaxed and renewed. And I decorated it to represent you know, my spiritual vision, which you can't really see it from here, but, um, and then this leaf, I was trying to like tape it. The leaf represents the serenity I feel in nature, um, where I feel most connected to spirit. And the pool, you know, represents relaxation. Um, the happy, there's an, a happy face here, represents happiness about my vision and my joy to do spiritual work, because I really feel called that way. The heart represents my love of unity, despite my worry about, you know, which path I'm going. <laughs> um, the butterfly in the center represents personal genesis and evolution in my transformation of my spiritual vision while I've been here this week. And then the star on the end is representing um, my hope to be a shining spiritual star in the unity movement. The glitter on the top is, represents light on my spiritual path. And then I put jewels on the top to represent the fruits of spirit along my, my spiritual journey. And um, in the daily word for that day, um, it was speaking right to me. It said, the Lord will guide you continually. And that was from Isaiah. So thank you. I'll pass this around. And I'll just pass this around for some people. <laughs> I'm going to read you from the Daily Word. This is my day of prayer, when I'm conscious of my true relation to Christ and his blessings. When we pray, we should enter into the consciousness wherein we know that we live with Christ and that his blessings are open to us. We live in the realization of being so closely related to him that nothing in all the world can keep our prayers from being answered and of the blessing we seek from coming to us. Never pray with a thought in mind that God may not want you to have some good. Never believe that as a child of God, you are unworthy of your father's teachings. God is constantly showering his good upon you. You have but to know this mighty truth in order to have your prayers answered. When you pray, pray with a thought in mind that you are identifying yourself with God and his blessing for you, that you are making yourself ready for and receptive to the good that God is sending your way. Pray in the realization that Christ is always lavishing his blessing on you. And the spiritual reading is the prayer of faith 
shall save him. James 5. This is being taken from a daily word, Monday, June 13th, 1938, 66 years ago. The day I was born. <laughs> Actually, what I decided to do is my um, mission, but in a way that's transformation because I always thought it would be so neat to write a book, and I always thought it would so be so neat to write a play, but I'm not very creative. And through this process of this class, I get to participate in writing a book. And so I decided that I am going to write a one-act play. So, I wrote a one-act play, <laughs> okay? All right, now, there's a counselor, and then there's a counselee. So this is kind of from our counseling class. Okay, I'm gonna start out with a counselor. Anne, I'm glad to see you today. How may I help you? Well, I don't really have a problem, but I need some clarification about what Spirit seems to be doing with me. Fine. I would be glad to be a sounding board and help you in any way I can. Well, thank you. Well, I'm in nursing school and doing okay. And I'm really excited because God made it real for me that this is where I belong. So... You feel God has called you to be a nurse. Yes, but recently I have felt a tug to study to help in spiritual things, too. And how in the world can one bridge the gap between these two desires? Well, recently I've read an area of ministry has spread up called parish nursing. Ooh. <laughs> You help people with physical desires, but you are also legally able to minister to their spiritual needs. Wow, I didn't know that. Yes, and knowing your gift for making people laugh, feel good about themselves, and compassionate love. Oh, you could help people heal in body, soul, and spirit. <laughs> what a wonderful idea. Do you want me to quit now? Okay. <laughs> Would anybody just like to take a breath with me? <laughs> Thank you. Well, I got to share this CD a little bit with you the other day, and uh, I want you to know that this whole process was definitely one of transformation from um, the self-conscious, shy person who dropped a college class because she didn't want to speak in front of everybody to someone who is up here and, and been speaking in front of people. So um, I was going to play a track, but I think since all of you can't take this home, I would like to teach you a song so you can take it home with you. So this one is called Beloved Design, and I'll sing it once and then you can sing it with me, okay? <clears throat> the words are, I am loved, I am loved, I am loving. So we do that twice. And then I'm beautiful, I'm capable, I'm God's beloved design. So it goes like this. I am loved, I am loved, I am loving. I am loved, I am loved, I am loving. I'm beautiful, capable, I'm God's beloved design. I am loved, I am loved, I am loving. I am loved, I am loved, I am loving. I'm with you, 
listening and to each other with you. You are love, love, loving. And we, you can say, we are love, love, loving. And uh, it's a great reminder of who we are and what we are. God bless you. Thank you. I don't get paid for I'm on all the water posters anyway. <laughs> I'm on all the water posters anyway. It'll make a difference. So. <laughs> oh, spirit. Oh, spirit. Can't you see? I do not want to go to unity. I mean, I do not want to see some kiddies. Uh, then spirit said, right from the bottom of my heart, right up through my rebellious head. You speak to me, Fred, don't be a turkey. It's not for you, it's for me, you see. Look, spirit, I gotta fix my car, my dog, my cat, my truck. Spirit's reply was, sorry, sweetie, tough luck. I just lost my job. Mm, swing <laughs> I'm not hearing you, Fred. You don't make no difference. Well, well, then I'm just going to go on and go pick it. Oh, quit your whining and go pick up your last standby ticket. Get out of Tampa Bay and be on your way. And lo and behold, from Houston's next door, once again, the last seat had me, and I was in the air for KC, MO, and C, with spirit chuckling at my heels, just like a dog hound. So here I am, not really in a jam, though uh, when I got here, none seemed to really understand whether I was the pastoral, the adult, the admin, or the children's ministry. <laughs> But you can bet your sweet bippy <laughs> that spirit made it very clear which one of the four I was to be. Now the days are nice, and I've never ate so much rice. <laughs> the, the food is dreadful, and I assure you quite unnameable. But I've learned to give thanks to God, thanks to this beautiful place, thanks to my class, thanks to the weather, and thank God for applesauce. <laughs> As I leave today, I will give thanks one more time. I will not have to experience a tofu food, whatever you call it. <laughs> but the 21 God lights are the best. From Canada to Texas to New York to Florida and all points in between come the best. We've laughed, we've cried, we've hugged, we've sang, and we've made jest. It's plain to see that my lesson for this week has been spirit looks out for you and you and me. And no matter what you all want to say, spirit will transform you his way. Thank you very much. I'm glad you all. Good afternoon. I'd like to share something with you. My five powers of prosperity. A year ago, last July, I was a happily retired senior who just got by. And I had a talk with God and God gave me these powers. The first one is forgiving, related to having an open channel for spirit to flow in and out, and you have to especially forgive yourself every day. The second is tithing, relating to keeping God's workers solvent. That's all of us. And the third one is prayer, related to the power of the spoken word. I told God, I said, hey, I need a thousand dollars a week. In August, I had 3,500. 
In September, I had my thousand a week, and I've had that plus ever since. God is wonderful. The fourth one is meditation, related to listening to God's guidance. And the last one is my favorite one, gratitude, related to being a magnet to draw God's good to you. Thank you. When I came, just before I came here, um, I had to do the paper on the Christ. And because I was going through a transition since the last time I was here at Unity Village, um, it took me a long time to get my thoughts and everything together. Little did I know that that's what was going on with me. So um, I did the Christ paper, and I found out what had been going on with me was a transformation. So I'm going to Unity Village. What a good place to go. Be, since I'm already transformed, <laughs> this is a good place to go and to learn new stuff because transformation takes you to a higher level. Level. So I got here and there were some things that um, I had some concerns and some um, challenges that I had to work through. And I did with the help of some people, some of the friends, the instructors, and myself using the principles that I had learned and coming into being that I am the Christ and the Christ is within me. So this morning, when I got up, I was singing and I was having such a good time all by myself. And I thought about the concerns that I had and I was able to make amends with, with those issues. And I um, even left um, left a tip for the maid because that was one of my concerns. And I felt so good that I was able to do that. So I'm going to read a psalm, and this is how I feel now. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the shepherds of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. I will be making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Thank you. Good afternoon. I wanted you to meet a very special angel. This is the angel of he looks really very beautiful and innocent, but she represents all those changes in my life that happen that are not the, not my idea. Um, the biggest change that I'm in transition, I just moved here nine months ago, and um, I'm in a job search mode. I uh, worked at Unity Village here for six months, and I left my job three months ago. So I have been practicing non-resistance, and I have also been practicing a lot of really great affirmations about fear and faith. And I'll just read you just a couple of lines from Jesus and his apostles who were crossing the Sea of Galilee. And there rose a great storm of wind and wave. Jesus is in the stern asleep. Mark 4.38, he'd been teaching the multitudes all day and he was tired. 
he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. When the wind ceased and there was a dead calm, he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Jesus asked these questions not in an impatient manner because he'd been awakened, but candidly and directly. Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? And he wanted them to think. He wanted the disciples to think. He wanted to draw their attention to the things he already taught them and the things they should have remembered. It's all about faith. God bless you. I wrote this poem the other night. Um, I'm not a writer of poetry. I am known in my church as the queen of journaling, but poetry not. But this one came, and, and that's what, what happened. And it's very difficult to do uh, for me. Um, it's a declaration. And it, I think it's a declaration I have not wanted to make, but knew that I have, I know that I have to make. Standing in the truth of my I amness, I hereby declare that I am stepping out and willing as an agent of God, strong and humbled, contemplative and yet ready to lace up the writing shoes, excited and passionate, feisty and vulnerable. Gone is the hesitancy, gone are the butterflies, gone the uncertainty, the insecurity. Gone is the question of what to do, where to go, and how to serve. Gone is the inauthenticity. I am free and unlimited. Thank you, God. I behold the Christ in me as well as the Christ in each of you. And this is a piece of the peace bridge balance, the rugged and the smooth, all one, all the same, elements don't change. And I might add that I, my minister is very concerned that the Peace Bridge has been closed and is thinking about doing a habitat project. She came home all through about a habitat project. And I'm going to suggest, by taking this home as a sample, that you all need some good Canadian concrete, <laughs> and the bridge will last. <laughs> okay. My name is Evelyn Boom Boom Wilson, and um, I was thinking about what I wanted to do, and I had gone over to the room to get the flowers that um, Reverend Lee had sent uh, Bessie and I and um, noticed that the room wasn't made up. So then it threw me into what I was going to do today, which is just be. Um, and so I just was. What is God trying to tell me when I get the idea that I'm not good enough? Just be. What is God telling me when I say to myself that I'm not pretty enough? Cutie, just be. What is God whispering to me when I tell myself that I'm not smart enough? Intelligent, just be. What is God shouting at me when I say I'm not prosperous enough? Tithe and just be. What is God saying when I say that I am in an imperfect relationship. Just learn to be. What does God feel when I cannot forgive myself? She says, just be good to yourself. What does God teach me when I feel I'm in irresponsible? Get going and just be. What is God telling me when I think I have sinned? Just be, my dear, 
You have not sinned. You have just missed the mark. When I look in the mirror and sometimes sigh, oh, gee, the God of my understanding looks back and says, boom, just be. <laughs> This is my newly composed poem entitled, My Evolving Self. I have been on this path of self-discovery for, oh, so many years. And along the way, I have explored my fears and also shed some tears. At times, I have despaired that these rifts would ever be repaired. Often it appeared I was adrift alone on a raging sea. I now have learned it was because truth at first I did not clearly see. But patiently I persevered as the God within me I revered. I learned that I am in a higher divine realm God has an everlasting love for me and everyone without blame. As I have evolved in my spiritual quest, I have grown to appreciate that God's love is best. A transformation is taking place. I can see it. I can feel it. I see myself and others in a different light. As I continue to see truth for me become ever bright. My heartfelt desire is to continue my journey of transformation with a new birth so that I may fulfill my mission here on earth. You and I are here to express God more in all that we say and do as God's love we outpour. Dear friends, continue your journey of discovery. Know that under God's guiding wings, you can make any recovery. Good afternoon. I thought uh, that uh, this sharing on transformation, uh, I thought about uh, the line that I wrote for the book or the title, uh, Less, uh, th Transformation Through Lessons in Nature. And uh, it seems to me that when my thoughts uh, get on a certain track, it, it just attracts and the teachings I need, what I need comes to me. So here I want to share uh, a couple little readings and then a couple of, of uh, seeds from nature that have the greatest potential for transformation just as every one of us in this room has because we are already transforming. And as I read one paragraph, <coughs> An acorn makes no sense unless we know that, wo that woven into the way it is made, there's something waiting to unfold that knows how to become an oak tree. An acorn is defined <coughs> by its capacity. Oh, I it. Yeah. Uh, and something can be the size, shape, weight, and texture, color of an acorn, but with, without its hidden power to become an oak tree, it's not an acorn. And uh, another seed that I picked up from nature is a black walnut. This black walnut, 
I think about the beautiful doors over on the administration building. And I don't know <clears throat> where I heard this story, I do know this story, that those trees from those doors came from this property. And that uh, for some reason, <clears throat> they need to be taken down, not just for the wood, but that they had, an, had a disease and need to be taken down. And as I look particularly at the middle door that has the unity over it, I think, what beauty and what potential came from a seed like this? And how many have walked through those doors? And how many lives are changed through that door to unity? And on the labyrinth yesterday, I also picked up this little seed cone and I thought, oh, on the way in, I thought, no, I don't want that. On the way out, I thought, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. I'd like to share with you all a story about prayer and transformation. I have four children, and I decided quite some time ago through prayer and meditation that it was each person's unique individual spiritual path for them to determine themselves, their responsibility. So I lived with that. I treated everyone with that respect as well as my children. But the parental strings are very tight. So I did more praying, more meditating, asking God, should I try to do anything about helping my children try to find a spiritual path? In early December of that year, the church sponsored 12 Buddhist monks who were traveling through the United States. And I actually had four of them stay at my house for several nights. It was a wonderful experience. My children really enjoyed it. A few weeks later, it was my birthday. And what they did for my birthday, if you would imagine with me, is they got me a green Buddha. And it's about this size, but it was green in a statue. And for my birthday, basically what they did is give this to me and say, Dad, we're not sure what you're doing with your life. <laughs> We're not sure what direction you're going. But what we want you to know is whatever you do, we support you. Oh. Prayers answered. Maybe some of them will end up finding the spiritual path. Since that time, I have been able to truly let each child move in their own individual and find their unique spiritual direction. Thank you. Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Winnie Richardson. And on the third day, he rose again. And so did I. <laughs> On bended knee and uplifted arms in prayer to heaven, I begin my transformation. One of many here at Unity Village. So it dawned on me, reach out. Because you're not going to get anything if you don't. Just reach out. Because I didn't feel anything when I got here. And it was the third day where it was like a cosmic two-by-four from God. Zap! Hey, remember, reach out to God, to life, and see what God has in store for thee. Stay in the light. Keep God in sight. Reach for the whole and be with God eternally. God is in our hearts. He was there from the start with his gifts of love to impart forever never to depart from the glory of God, because the best is yet to be. Thank you. My name is Harry Borders. I'm 
so thankful to be here with you this week. I wanted to, uh, somebody asked me today if I had any instructions from a Jewish mother, and I did last night. And it reminded me today of the story. A boy came home from school to his mother and was very excited, and he said, Mom, Mom, I got the part in the school play. She said, Wonderful. What part did you get? He said, I get to play the part of the husband. She scowled and said, You go tell that teacher tomorrow, I want you to have a speaking part. <laughs> what I brought to, uh, today for the transformation experience for me was a pine cone branch and a flower from Ed Rabel's on moral service yesterday. Um, I believe that the transforming power of God can change you and me through our making a connection with nature. Plants, animals, and all humans have the same dimensional properties that make up the universe. It's known by the ancient scientists and also our first artists as the divine proportion from the book, if you read the book. The most important and, and beautiful number in the universe is 1.618, or is also known as 5. In this context, be aware that the petals the, all on a pine tree, the branches, the needles, and all the petals of a pine cone are based on that mathematical formula. My body, from my head to my toes, if you were to divide from my belly button to my toes into that hole, would give you 1.68. Every beehive in the world is comprised, if you divided the female population by the males, would give you 1.618. From my shoulder and your shoulder, your tip of your fingers, if you divided the elbow out that way, it would give you 1.618. We are a walking tribute to PHI or Phi. And Charles and Myrtle Fillmore quoted often Romans when we read in Romans 12, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Bessie Duncan told us this week how she was transformed by a nighttime experience here at Unity. The wildlife, the trees, the flowers, the grounds of this village have made my connection a renewal for me this week. I am confident that the transforming power of God can change you through your making the connection through nature. Thank you. Well, that's kind of how it works, too. Whoever's on the scene shows up, and all of the wardrobe is color-coordinated, and everything fits together in the divine plan that defines itself as we go along, right? Um, actually, you are my world. You are my world because you creatively expressed everything that I was going to get up here and talk about. And so I said, God, what do you want me to do? God said, shift. I said, what? That's like a holy shift again. So all I could do was think, okay, and sh share with you what God has done through me. Only by myself and the discovery to recover and uncover God's beauty. Simply put, God said, access and find access and find the truth. That wasn't enough for me. I thought of the, our founder, our new Charlie Angel, Charles Fillmore. And I remembered what he said, that God has given us our physical being and the physical earth and all its bounty. It is the living truth to get understanding of the free use of it all and own the feeling of doing something to assist the establishment of the kingdom of heaven, working towards something real and constructive. Can you believe it? I say, hey, lo, that's sh truly a holy shift taking place on the planet through what we thought, and I say we because we're all in this as one together, we thought it was our destruction. 
in our transformation. Halo? Can I get a halo here today? And so with that, I say, this is what God has done, and this is what you are now a part of, as one world, one dream, in the spirit of unity. Each and every halo on there is another episode of what you are playing in your part in this world. One big book. The divine plan defining itself as we go along. Nobody else is left, right? That's it, darling. So I get to go three minutes or more. Well, this is three minutes, but I, I want to say something before I do that. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night um, with divine inspirations, and it's only happened just two or three times. One of the times I first remember was right before my children were going to be baptized. And I woke up and thought I was supposed to sing a song called Wash Me as White as Snow. And I asked the pastor of the church I was at then if I could sing that to them. I had never sang in front of a church audience before. This morning I woke up at about 4.30 and this tune was in my ear and I knew that I was supposed to do something. And it transformed into a song, and I've never written a song before. I also am a soprano, and I've never been able to find my voice in a year since it went, went away from me when I knocked the walls down in my kitchen. But one of you, or two of you in here, sing a little lower than soprano, and you help me transform that voice. And so this is the first time I'm singing in this voice was the first time I have written a song. It is special and you all know it and you may cry, but that's okay if you do. And if I cry, it's okay too. I have a presence for each of you when we get done, a copy of it for yourself. <clears throat> the title is I Am a Genius by Edith wow. Ann Washington. <clears throat> I am a genius, now I believe, I apply my wisdom, I do achieve, can't you see, I am consciously my dominant thoughts to support my dreams. I can now even see it unfolding as me. We are all God's genies, now we believe, we apply our wisdom, and we achieve, now we can see, we are everything God wants us to be. Unfolding right here as you and me. You are so beautiful to me. We are God's precious gift. Yes, you and me, God is so pleased. 
we applied God's wisdom and allowed it to unfold in each of us. We can now imagine it right here as we witness it. We achieve through the Christ within. God says, well done. I always say divine love and holy kisses too, but we'll save that for the end. 